Republican Senator Rob Portman of Ohio. He sits on the Homeland Security and Foreign Relations Committees. Senator, thank you for coming in. Hey, Kate. Good to be on with you again. Thank you. Do you support the majority leader on this one? ISIS is weakened, but ISIS uh, is not destroyed in Syria. So, yeah, we've, we've got to continue to work with our allies. And everybody wants to get our troops out. There are about 2,000 troops there, by the way. Uh, but we've got to do it in a slow and concerted way. In other words, working with our allies and our regional partners. And we also have to protect the Kurds. That's the other part of this that I, uh, I'm sure that uh, Majority Leader uh, McConnell spoke about as well, is that these Kurds have stuck by our side. And so uh, there needs to be an understanding, particularly with Turkey, that we're not going to leave the Kurds, uh, you know, to a, to a uh, what could be a disastrous result for them. So I think um, for both those reasons, we need to move very, very, uh, very slowly. And, and, you know, we need to work with our allies in the region. I mean, and it's one thing to say this to the president in private, but in making, trying to have this an amendment in this statement coming from McConnell just yesterday, can this, th on this issue, can this be viewed as anything other than a direct rebuke of the president's foreign poli policy, his position, what he wants to do with regard to this? Well, I, I think it, you know, it reflects what a lot of uh, us are concerned about. But I will say, Kate, I mean, the president started the discussion. And as I said earlier, people want our troops out. There's no question. We don't want to be spread as thin as we are. And we, we do have involvement in a lot of countries, relatively small numbers of troops uh, compared to where we were, you know, with Afghanistan and Iraq uh, in previous administrations. But we still have right, But it's not really a discussion commitment. coming from the president, right, Senator? I mean, he's the one that says they're coming home. Well, he said they're coming home, but my understanding from, you know, talking to members of the administration, including some comments that um, uh, members of the administration have said, including Secretary Pompeo and, and also uh, John Bolton, the National Security Advisor, is that they are looking at a withdrawal that will be uh, more thoughtful and more carefully planned with our allies to avoid some of the problems we've talked about. The other thing that I've been promoting, Kate, and I think makes sense, is to have a regional strike force no matter what. In other words, mm -hmm. in other places to have the ability to respond quickly. Because that's what we really uh, missed last time. When we precipitously pulled out of Iraq in the Obama administration, uh, there were a relatively small number of ISIS fighters who came into Iraq, but we weren't able to respond. And soon they had you know, almost two-thirds of the territory. Uh, it took a long time for us to push that back, and it's taken us a long time to have these relatively good results in Syria. And but they're not, they're not destroyed yet. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they're, no. they're weakened, no, no question about it. And we've got to be sure that... We can respond and, quickly. And with Syria, a lot of it comes down to, you know, intelligence. This morning, the president um, is attacking the leaders of the intelligence community over their assessment of threats posed by ISIS, Iran, North Korea, and more. Their assessment contradicts much of his policies. And he said in tweets this morning that they are wrong and suggested that they need to go back to school. I mean, who do you believe? Do you think the top brass of the na nation's intelligence apparatus are wrong? Well, I, I didn't see the tweet. Uh, I thought I saw the tweets this morning. I missed that one. Uh, uh, I have a Twitter alert on, on my phone for uh, the president's tweets. They were lengthy tweets. He, does, he says they're wrong, <laughs> and he says that they should go back to school. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen the tweet. But, but let me just say this. I, I think that there is a continued threat, certainly from ISIS. Uh, I, the president has acknowledged that. I've heard that he understands they're, they're still in existence, not just in Syria, but globally. And we have to be cognizant of that. My understanding is the assessment also had to do with North Korea and their move toward nuclear weapons and, you know, that we still have a long way to go there. Not saying that it's not positive what we're doing. It's very positive. I mean, for the first time in three or four administrations, finally we're getting some movement in the right direction, but that they still have this capability and not just to But, Senator, does, it, does it bother you? Because the president clearly thinks that what the assessment coming from intel leaders, he thinks it's in contradiction to what he's saying. He thinks that. Do you, does that... Does that bother you? Do you think they're in contradiction? Because the president does. Well, I, again, I haven't seen his tweet, so I need to look at that. But I, I think we need to work together. And with regard to the intelligence community uh, and their assessment, uh, they're not always right. They're not always, uh, you know, historically accurate. But that's the best we have, and we need to rely yeah. on them. So uh, I, I think about, you know, uh, WMDs in Iraq as an example, um, where right. they, they weren't exactly accurate. So. Yeah, we need to have oversight here in Congress, and people need to be sure that we're getting the right information. But uh, it's the best we have, and of course, we need to rely on them. Let me let's talk about the shutdown really quickly. Negotiators are meeting today. You are pushing for a bill that would effectively ban any government shutdowns in the future. I asked him the Republican Congressman Tom Reed about it yesterday, and, and he doesn't support that idea. He says that it lets you all off the hook effectively. That it, you're abdicating your responsibilities. What do you say to that? Well, I, I haven't talked to Tom about it, but I do know that we have uh, 
half of the Republican conference already co-sponsoring our legislation over here in the Senate, and there's a companion bill in the House that's bipartisan, introduced by a Republican and Democrat, and there's just a lot of momentum for it right now, Kate. I can't tell you the number of my colleagues who are coming up to me and saying, this is it, you know, after going through this 35-day yeah. shutdown, it was so painful. Uh, we don't want to do this again. Uh, and there are different ways to get at it. One of the things about our bill that I like is that it deals with what uh, Congressman Reid is talking about in the sense that it says after four months, uh, when you haven't been able to come to an agreement, and you have this continuing resolution in place, meaning spending from the previous year, then the spending is reduced by 1%. Why do we do that? It's to get Republicans and Democrats to the table, the precise issue he's talking about, so that people are feeling like you know they're accountable to coming up with a result, which is an appropriations bill, a spending bill. We yeah. want spending bills. We don't want continuing resolutions forever, because that way you don't get reform of government, uh, you don't get predictability. So I think it's a good way to do it. By the way, 54% of the spending we're talking about is now defense spending. And so this notion that somehow Republicans wouldn't mind the 1%, I think they would mind it. <laughs> I would mind it. I mean, a lot of people would. So it's a significant way to deal with the issue he raises and others have raised. We need, one, to stop the shutdowns. That's the most important thing. So let's never do that again. But second, we also need to provide an incentive to get the appropriators, in particular the Appropriations Committee members, to do their work so that we have spending bills, so they're done on time, and so that we can indeed have you know, better government for the people we represent. The core responsibility of the Congress, <laughs> keeping the government funded and running. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Kate. Good to talk to you as always. Thank you. Coming up for us.